Yes! I finally found a way to extract, convert a color grade from a photo with ChatGPT for Lightroom. It's magic! A way that guarantees an XMP file. An XMP file is a file Lightroom uses to color grade. So I preset file. So I guess we're still in color grades today. I'm taking this. Of course we're not stealing. We are photographers, colorists, people who love photography. We don't steal, we inspire each other. But before we dive into how, let me put a little disclaimer right here. Therefore you need to understand this video is for inspiration only. I don't support stealing at all. I think you should communicate. So if you like a certain style of presets or color grading, just buy the preset or ask the photographer, hey, how did you make your preset? Or can you give me some tips? Just communicate with each other. Just talk to each other is still the best way to learn and it's the most fun way to learn because the photography community is great well for the most part so if your favorite creator isn't available or the presets isn't available if you can't buy it or you just want to have a little help there is another way and that's using ChatGPT. and i'm going to show you how to do it so in my previous video some of you could not extract the xmp file and like I said in the intro, the XMP file is the, the file that contains the preset information of your Lightroom preset. But I found a solution because I don't like it when I say something on the internet and people can't do it. And they think, oh, this Dutch guy is just messing around with us. I'm not messing around. I found the problem why some people just can't make an XMP file with ChatGPT. Therefore, a very quick explanation on how to use ChatGPT. And I know you want to make the preset and you can go to the chapter to make the preset, but some people fail because of a certain reason or multiple reasons. So I'm going to explain to you what those reasons are and what you have to do to make sure you make an XMP file. So first, I use ChatGPT version 4. Uh, you can use all the models, but I think 4 is the best model to use. Um, don't use third-party apps like browser extensions. Uh, uh, use ChatGPT um, in, in its most pure form. So I use an app for my Mac. On that app, I have access to GPT without something in between. You can use the browser, but some people, uh, the browser doesn't work really great, but it should work in the browser. I also use the paid version of ChatGPT. It is possible with a free version, but it is less reliable and uh, it's also older. So it, you could run into some problems making XMP files. And the most important thing, and this is the thing where a lot of people fail making XMP files, you have to communicate with GPT as it is a person, like I'm communicating with you. Because ChatGPT really knows you. Yes, ChatGPT knows who you are. It will probably give another answer than your ChatGPT does. Let me show you. If I ask ChatGPT to write an Instagram post for me without any context, it will give me a perfect post that is tailored to me. It knows I'm a wedding photographer, I'm shooting with a Canon R5 Mark II, and it even talks about lenses and asks followers to go to my channel and subscribe to my channel. And if you should ask why you should subscribe to my channel, it has all the answers. And this was a dirty shameless plug, by the way subscribe okay we have to be a little bit more serious because you have to extract the preset because that's what you came for you want to extract the preset what you need is two photos in jpeg you need a reference photo and a photo you want to edit and to show how accurate gpt will be i'm going to use the same photo my own photo i shot on a wedding i'm going to add an edited version of the photo the the the, 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 the version with the preset and i'm going to put in a basic raw conversion to JPEG, so an unedited photo. Uh, and if I'm throwing them both in the in the chat prompt, so you can just uh, pick up your photos and drop them in the in the in the in the chat uh, part of GPT, it uploads the photos automatically. Then I type in my prompt. You can find the prompt in the description below. And my prompt is very simple. I don't use any framework. If you don't know what a framework is, you can check out the playlist in the description below about AI and photography because frameworks are very important to communicate with ChatGPT. I use a simple prompt because GPT knows me like my wife. Only my wife is always right, according to her. Anywho, if you have trouble with the prompt, try to talk to GPT and ask why it doesn't want to make an XMP file and how you can fix it. So in my prompt and in my example, it will start analyzing the photos. And to be clear, you can use all kinds of photos as a reference photo or a destination photo. 
I chose the same photos to show you the difference. After analyzing the photo, it gives me some uh, settings and it creates a preset. I see that the white balance is a bit strange, but we can fix that in Lightroom. I'm actually scared that it won't work because I'm doing this video in one take. So if it doesn't work, I have to start again. And I'm doing one take because I'm lazy and I want to do it in one take and have it done. But we have to import the preset right now. So if you don't know how to import a preset, go to the develop module. That's the module where you edit your photo. That's in the top right corner. Then you go to the left side of your screen and you open up the presets tab. And in the preset tab, make sure that the user presets is visible. So if you don't see user presets, you have to make it visible. If you click on the plus icon on the top right part of that column, you can choose manage presets. And if you see on the top, you see user presets, make sure that's been checked. If it's checked, you're good to go. If it isn't, it's unchecked, it won't work. So make sure it's checked because the preset will be imported in that um, folder. It doesn't look like a folder, but it is a folder. So the same plus symbol is also the symbol for importing your preset. So you click it again and you choose import, find the preset and you're good to go. It will import the preset in the user presets. Now it can happen that you get an error message saying that the preset is empty. It happens, just go to the GPT and say it's empty, can you fix it? And it will fix it for you. Sometimes you have to do it a couple of times, but eventually it will work. Maybe ChatGP works the same way I do, makes a lot of mistakes and wants to reflect how bad I'm doing with making so many mistakes. I don't know. And of course you want to use the preset. So it's time to check out if the preset works. So I've put it in reference view. So you can see the original edited photo on the left and you can see the unedited, unedited version on the right. And if you click on the preset right away, it looks like horrible. But I think we only have to adjust the white balance settings and I think we are one white balance click away from the result. And ah, uh, yes. Well, it looks great actually. Whoa. I'm really impressed that GPT can do this. And I see that, I've seen it a lot of times, but still I'm impressed. But I don't know if I wanna cheer or wanna cry because the amount, the amount of hours I've put in learning how to color grade for the last 15 years is a lot. I mean, I've cursed on my computer, didn't get it, it didn't, didn't work. So I did a lot of grinding to become a color grader. I didn't do any study or something. I just tried to do it myself and learned along the way. And I know Photoshop and Capture One have features that can also copy a look, um, but that's not the point of this video. The point is that we're doing, doing it with ChatGPT, something I use for more than only this. I use it for uh, everything in my, in my company. So, I mean, it's my, it's my colleague, it's my, it's, my, it's my best friend. The white balance is still not to my liking, so I can just a tiny, tiny bit, but what did GPT actually do? What did it do with the preset? Well, it changed the highlights down, fine. Uh, dehaze up, I don't like to use dehaze because I don't like the, the feature. It messes up the photo, but right, it, it did use the dehaze. It used a basic S curve in the tone curves, which is great by the way to start learning tone curves, make S curves and go from that. Um, I did a little bit of adjustment in the red channel, not a lot, but that's the thing with um, tone curves. Uh, people don't understand because they, Pull everything up and it's about nuances. It's a beautiful word, nuances. Like the Germans say, fingerspitzekevul. I'm not German, by the way, but I know the words. I would do the most heavy lifting with the with the tone curves personally. Uh, GPT didn't use a lot of tone curves, but I would do the most part in the tone curves because I love the tone curves. And I love the calibration tool even more than the tone curves. And I'm impressed that GPT actually used the calibration tool. If you don't know what a calibration tool is, it's only in, in Lightroom Classic. It isn't in Lightroom the normal version. Uh, I have a separate video about that. I put it in my description so you can check it out. The, the, the calibration tool is really awesome. I use it on all my, uh, my, my presets. So in the color mixer, it used the U and the luminance, which is fine. And in the effects, it created a bit of vignetting to make the, the photo more centered to the, the middle, which we do a lot of photography to pull the viewer a little bit to the middle. It's normal in photography. 
I do it a different way, I do it with masks, but vignetting is a way to do it. So we have to have a conclusion. Do I still have it right a very wide way? I think uh, this preset is <laughs> really impressive. I could work with it, but for me, I would make it from sketch, scratch because I could recreate a preset from somebody else just by looking at it. But I think it's a great way to start learning color grading. Um, the thing I see the most is that the skin tones look horrible in the in the in the way ChatGPT did it. Maybe I could tell GPT to really focus on the skin tones because those are very important, and also the black and whites. But if you're starting out, it could really help you understanding colors, so you can learn to create your own presets someday. Because that's the most important thing. Just try to create your own presets. Use it as a help, but. Do it yourself, so someday someone else can steal your presets. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I appreciate you watching my video. Uh, give a like if you liked the video, comment, well you know all the things you have to do, do that, that YouTubers ask, but it really really helps. And I hope to see you next time, bye bye.